What's up, Nail Geeks? I am coming in with Polish Pickup January 2021. This time we have the theme birthstones, gems, and minerals. I apologize for getting this one out at the uh, final hour, if you will. I know wishlisting is already up, and I do try to get these videos out as soon as possible, but um, we all know that there has been lots of delays, and that includes... Uh, blogger packages. So I'm just coming in real quick. And I also wanted to note that I do have five $10 gift codes to give away. So please comment below on this video and I will pick random names to be chosen for that. Please note that um, I do have two winners from last month that have not emailed me. So please double check your comments from last month's uh, December's video and email me. I do have your codes saved. Those of you who uh, do win on this one, I will reply to your comment and I'll give you my email address so you can email me and I can get you your code. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First up is Alchemy Lacquers Kyber Crystal. This is a very pale blue Crelly with pink to orange shimmer and pink to orange shifting flakes. This is inspired by Star Wars, those precious Kyber crystals that the Force attuned stones that are used by the Jedi and Sith. Price will be $11.50 and there is a cap of $150 US and $5 UK. So the formula on Kyber Crystal is quite crelly. It's of the more dense type. It has a touch of squish factor. Now I want to note that um, it does appear to be just the slightest bit uneven on the first and second coat. So I'm gonna suggest going in on three coats for this one, go in light and just allow it to build itself up. It does have a great plumping factor on the third coat. And um, I just wanted to remind you guys, um, at the point that I was swatching January's polished pickups, this was early December that I worked on them. So I still have a couple breaks. And unfortunately, as much as I like to keep my nails uniform in my videos, um, unfortunately I did get these sporadically throughout December. So uh, some of them you'll see that I still have that horrible patch. I'm happy to report that now I don't have that patch, but, um, I do feel like it did play just the slightest bit of a factor in how this one uh, applied on myself. So if you don't have any repairs, I think you're gonna be just fine at three normal coats on this. Now it does dry down quite flat, so you're gonna wanna use a good glossy top coat to finish it off. And next is AP Pila. She brings us Diamond Blue. This is a blue base with micro green sparkles inspired by blue diamonds. Price is 12 and there is a cap of 300 US and 50 UK. So the formula on this is quite jelly-like. It does have that lovely squish factor I'm always talking about on uh, the wonderful jelly polishes that have this type of finish. It applies very opaque. So I'm gonna suggest two normal to light coats on it, depending on the length of your free edge. It builds up very quickly to opacity. And this is one of those types of true jellies in that depending on how you wear it, depends on how intense and rich that base color is going to come off. So there's quite a bit of those little green sparks happening through here. I think the video is giving you a pretty good representation of what I'm seeing in person. They are on the touch subtle side um, in real life. And um, on the macro shots, you can kind of see them. It gives you this very soft, somewhat subtle sort of sparkle. Now this does dry down quite flat. So I'm gonna suggest a good glossy top coat just to give it that gorgeous juicy like appearance. Now AP Pila is also bringing back her water base top coat. This one will be 13 and there is a cap of 700 US and 100 UK. So this is a water based top coat. It is basically a smudge free top coat. It is fantastic. I went in with a white stamping polish here and you can see I'm going in real nasty with those brush strokes for a lack of better words. Um, it kind of hurts my eyes to watch that, but it has no smearing on it. Wonderful as a layer between stamping or nail art and your glossy top coat. And it's also fantastic for linear holographics. And next we have Baroness X Fire Agate. This is a black magenta red bronze multi-chrome with a sprinkling of green and blue shifting iridescent flakes. This is inspired by its namesake. Price is $12.50 and there is a cap of $175 US and $20 UK. 
Now I know we've all been going quite uh, bananas for the red to green multi-chrome pigment lately. I'm definitely in that category with you guys on that. This is similar to that multi-chrome, but there is the slightest bit of a different um, color roll to it at very extreme angles. So in my opinion, at really extreme angles, it's going to take on this bronzy sort of look. So I think the color roll is very similar to the uh, black to red multi-chrome pigment, but it's just the slightest bit different. This is quite shifty in person and in indoor lighting, it takes on this black sort of appearance and at angles, there's an easy red to bronze shift. And at some angles, you might see a touch of magenta. Now I do uh, want to apologize on my multi-chrome swatches. I swear, I just feel like I can't uh, capture them as well. Um, and I do apologize about that, but this is quite shifty. And I really like that the little tiny iridescent flakes here, they're small and they're a touch subtle in person, but I think it kind of gives it this little extra oomph factor. I had no problems getting them out of the bottle. Um, so no need for fishing or anything like that. And I'm also gonna suggest three coats for full opacity on this one and going in with a glossy top coat to finish it off. And Baroness X is also bringing us Acetone Antidote in the scent Pomegranate. This is uh, basically inspired by by the story of Persephone and Hades. And this is going to be 425 and there is no cap. So I like to put an entire vial into my pump bottle and thankfully I was due for a refill. This bottle holds, I think, um, about eight to nine ounces of acetone and I'm putting 100% pure acetone in my bottle and then I'm gonna dump the whole vial in there. Now this month's shade, I'm really digging it. It has a somewhat clean undertone to it. It smells almost perfumey to me in my honest opinion. It's very pleasant and it's somewhat floral too. So if you like clean and floral scents, I think this one's gonna be for you. It's very nice. I did use uh, the polish remover after I mixed it up here in my pump bottle and I had a nice uh, remnant on my skin, on my cuticles where I had uh, removed my polish. So very nice and again, if that scent note is for you. Typically, I personally am a big old bakery fan myself. I like sweet sort of scents, but I also enjoy the perfumey scents too, and this one is lovely. And next we have by Danny Viana. This is Preserver of History, described as a blackened yellow jelly base with metallic gold flakes and a mix of brown metallic glitters. This is inspired by Amber, price is 12, and there is a cap of 250 US and 20 UK. So this is what I'm going to consider a straight up prugly color. It's lovely and it's one of those colors that I think you're either going to super love uh, or super shy away from. So for opacity on it, I'm going to suggest three coats. Now, please note, this is a true satisfying jelly type of formula. It's very smooth on application. And depending on how you wear it, it's going to take on quite a different effect. So on the second coat here, you can see just a touch of my smile line. So if you have a prominent free edge, you might want to go up to that third coat. But if you have shorties or your free edge is not as prominent as mine, and that second coat is going to give you this interesting sort of almost olive sort of lean, but when you go in for that third coat, it kind of deepens it out a bit more and we see just a bit more of that yellowish sort of cast to it. Again, this is a soft sort of color, so I think at two or three coats, you're gonna see just the slightest bit of your smile line. And again, I'm gonna suggest going in with a glossy top coat. And next we have Cameo Colors Lacquers. This is Dia Optasia, described as a deep emerald leaning teal jelly with scattered hollow sparkle, a dash of burnished gold hollow micro glitter, full of orange to gold crystal chameleon flakes, gold metallic micro flakes, and silver hollow micro flakes. This is inspired by Dioptase, price is $11.50, and there's a cap of 100 US and 5 UK. So this has quite a uh, jelly type of lean to it, but it builds up very satisfyingly to opacity. I'm gonna suggest two coats on it. This is lovely, very sparkly, and it dries down a little bit flat. So I'm gonna suggest a glossy top coat to give it that juicy sort of effect. I love this base color. It is very flattering. I do think it has this emerald lean to it, but of course there's also that strong teal sort of factor with it too. I had no problems getting those flakes or the little sparkles on my nails. As you can see here, easy, smooth formula, very flattering. And it has that nice scattered sort of really dense sort of holographic fleck to it. And next is Crystal Knockout. This is Pieces of Prism. 
described as an ivory base with orange to green iridescent shimmer, gold and silver holographic micro glitter, and color shifting iridescent flakes in copper, orange, gold, and green. This is inspired by gypsum. Price is 11 and there is no cap. So this has a jelly formula. It's quite squishy on your brush strokes. So I'm going to suggest going in just the slightest bit lightly on your application and build it up at three coats. This is a soft, delicate sort of color, but there is a really lovely sort of milky white type of base to it. And there's quite a bit of that copper shimmer, which is giving you that orangey sort of uh, cast on the video. Now, I think some might be able to get away with two coats on it. It's really going to depend on how you apply but I kind of wanted to see what that third coat would look like. So I went in and I was really satisfied with how it looked. So personally, if your nails are like mine, I think three normal to light coats is going to be perfect. Now this dries down uh, quite flat. So again, I'm going to suggest a glossy top coat and you'll get that nice sparkly ivory sort of effect. And next we have Cupcake Polish. This is Mystic Topaz, described as a medium gray cream polish filled with purple to teal to gold multi-chrome and iridescent shimmers. This is inspired by lab-created Mystic Topaz. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So this has a very jelly-like formula to it, but it builds up somewhat crelly-like in my opinion, and it's quite smooth on the brush strokes. Now for opacity, I'm gonna suggest three coats on it. Uh, some might be able to get away with two, depending on how you apply. And this is quite shifty in person. I really like that the base color is quite dusky looking, but in indoor lighting, it take, the shimmer takes on this uh, teal sort of cast and it easily shifts over to purple at angles. Really nice. And I think it's very, very flattering, especially being a dusky sort of shade. Now, again, uh, I did have that repair on this nail, so it might be playing a factor and with me needing that third coat, but, um, still very easy to build up to opacity and you can see on the third coat here it even covered up quite a bit of that awful awful repair i'm so glad i don't have it anymore i finally grew it out and i will promise that i will stop complaining about it uh, as we move forward with my swatches now this does dry down flat so again i'm using a glossy top coat here i am using glisten and glows glossy top coat more on that in a bit but that's what you're seeing on the video and i'm good to go and it's just super shifty and next we have dom nail polish she brings us domethyst this is a pink and black purple thermal polish loaded with pink and purple glitters inspired by the maker's amethyst birthstone price is 1250 and there is a cap of 140 us and 10 uk so this has a wonderful jelly juicy like factor to it but it's very easy to build up I think most are going to be just fine at two coats on it. And as you can see on the first coat here, easy transition between the thermal properties. And I love the glitters in this one. So you can see between my first and second coat, it does dry down very, very matte, very flat, which again is characteristic of thermals for the most part. And the glitters here um, look kind of dull, but once you go in with either a glitter smoothing top coat and or a glossy top coat, you'll see it gets that wonderful juicy sort of factor to it and it allows the sparkles to uh, do their thing. So here on the full hand shot, that is the warm state. It's this somewhat rosy sort of pink shade and at very cold temperatures, especially here with the ice water, it is this blackened sort of purple. Very nice. I really like uh, extreme contrast like this because if you have a free edge, uh, it definitely takes on that obvious two colors in between the thermal states. And next is Emily Damali Balancing Act. This is a dusty mauve base with bright orange glitters. This is inspired by Agate. Price is 10 and there is a cap of 470 US and 30 UK. So the formula on this is very crelly like but it has that very uh, creamy like application to it it self levels very well which is what i've come to expect from emily damali polishes and for opacity i'm going to suggest two possibly three coats if you polish quite light you might need that third coat but it evens out very well dries down very well too now the glitters i had no issues getting them out of the bottle so no need for fishing but i will suggest depending on uh, your application type, you might need a second coat of top coat. I don't think it was so thirsty that it needed a glitter smoothing top coat per se, but 
I do think uh, it does dry down just a touch thirsty for top coat. So if you want to super smooth it out, uh, I would suggest a generous application of top coat. This is a really interesting sort of base. I like how the glitters contrast very well against that base color. It's definitely this dusky sort of somewhat mauve. I would almost classify it as a dusky lavender. And next we have Fair Maiden Polish. This is Celestine, described as a blue aqua silver multi-chrome with hollow flakes. This is inspired by an image of a teal geode. Price is 12 and there's no cap. So this is uh, basically the holographic version of uh, one of the uh, multi-chromes that they released in December. It's lovely. And if you enjoyed that color, you'll definitely want the holographic version of it. So they are the uh, smaller sort of densely packed holographic flex. And I think it definitely does not detract from the color roll here. Now this is very shifty. If you haven't watched my Fair Maiden video from a few weeks ago from their uh, Black Friday releases, I uh, definitely recommend that so that you can kind of get a better idea. This is very shifty in person and in indoor lighting. It has this aqua sort of uh, cast to it and there's a touch of blue and then there's this strong silver uh, feel from it in the uh, brighter light. So very lovely. If you let that mermaidy sort of look, definitely recommend this one. Now it does dry down flat, so again, I'm going to suggest a good glossy top coat. And next we have Femme Fatale. This is Bewitch You, described as a sheer summer sky blue when warm to a dusty rose pink when cold with an iridescent blue overlay and a luminous red shifting green flakes. Price is 14 and there's a cap of 500 in the U.S. shop. And those of you um, in Australia, this will be available for purchase through Femme Fatale's site uh, if you are there and you wanted to order it. So I'll also link that below for you guys uh, if you are wanting to shop there. Those of us in the U.S., again, there is a 500 cap on it. So this has a very uh, jelly-like formula to it. And for opacity, I think two coats is going to be perfect for most. Some might need a third coat on it. Just really going to depend on your nail length. I personally found that two coats was just fine. The thermal properties to it is very, very reactive, as you'll see here in just a moment. And the flakes here are really strong against both of the color states. So on the full hand shot here, I am wearing a glossy top coat as again, thermals dry down very matte. And you can see the cold state and here on the ice water shot, that is the warm state. So very obvious sort of uh, shift between both colors and easy transition depending on the temperature. And Flirt and Cosmetics brings us Girly Girl's Best Friend. This is a baby pink that shifts to champagne pink with gold flecks. Inspired by pink diamonds, price is $11.50 and there is a cap of 100 bottles. So this is very intensely sparkly. I personally appreciate that the little shimmery flecks here kind of have that almost reflective sort of appearance with them in how they sparkle. Definite uh, pink diamond vibes I'm getting from it. Now for opacity, I'm going to suggest between two and three coats. This one's really going to depend on how you apply. I personally found that three normal to light coats on it is going to flatter it the best and give you the most glitter payoff. There's quite a bit of larger glitters here too. I had no issues with them laying down flat for me. Now I will note that you may want to finish off with a glitter smoothing top coat or a uh, two coats of a glossy top coat. Really going to depend. It is just the slightest bit thirsty. So definitely going to suggest uh, again, two coats of glossy top coat or a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat. Now here on the third coat, you can see it looked pretty good on the uh, second coat in terms of opacity, but again, I'm extra and I want as much glitter as possible on my nails. And I really thought that third light coat helped to plump everything out and just get as much glitter as possible on my nails. Glisten and Glow, she brings us Pick Your Pouch. This is a white base glitter crelly loaded with various shapes and sizes of gemstone shades of blue, purple, pink, red, yellow, green, turquoise, and gray, inspired by the Pick Your Pouch gemstone baggies. Price is $12.50 and there is no cap. P.S. I loved those little gemstone uh, kiosk things where as a kid you get to pick whatever you want in those little cute velvet pouches. Uh, this is inspired by that and it definitely gives me those vibes. I think this is also going to be a fantastic color for spring. 
you will get a load of those glitters on your nails. No need for fishing. There's quite a bit that comes up. And I do think the base color is what I consider more of a true sort of white, not quite a stark white, um, but definite uh, straight up, no undertones to it. Now for opacity, I'm gonna suggest two coats and finish off with a glossy top coat, two coats of that, or a glitter smoothing top coat. So full honesty here, on the glossy top coat application, I am wearing Glisten and Glow's Glitter Grabber, and that's what I'm applying the glossy top coat over. So I think it is on the thirsty side, and I'm gonna suggest that. I think it really helped to smooth everything out and give you that really ultra glossy finish. This top coat is fantastic. I have raved about it a ton on this channel, and uh, I definitely recommend adding it to your order if you have not tried it yet, as it also does not smear stamping. And next we have Indie by Patty Lopez. This is Feel Your Spirit, Begin Love. Described as a light pink curly with magenta and white matte glitters, crystal flaggies, and this is inspired by Rhodochrosite Stone. Price is 12, and there's a cap of 200 US and 20 UK. Now this is what I consider one of those milky sort of shades. It's soft and delicate, and I think it looks really awesome between two and three coats. So depending on your preference, if you want that softer sort of look, I think two coats is perfect, but I really wanted to see what a third coat looked like, so I took it up to three coats. It covered very well, but I do wanna note in very bright lights, like what you see on the video, you will see a touch of your smile line if you have a prominent free edge like myself. Now there are these little iridescent flakes in here too. I think it gives this almost opalescent effect. They are on the touch subtle side in person, but what your eyes are mostly going to gravitate towards are those pink and gold glitters here. So they're small and somewhat medium sized, now this does dry down somewhat thirsty, so I'm gonna suggest a good glossy top coat to finish this one off. Just kind of smooth it out and finish up with that nice milky sort of uh, finish in the final look. And next we have Kathleen and Co. This is Bloodstone, described as a black jelly base with red to gold Aurora shimmer and a dusting of hollow micro glitters. This is inspired by the Maker's Mom's March Birthstone. Price is $12.50 and there's a cap of $250 US and $25 UK. So if you are a fan of those vampy sort of colors, this one's definitely for you. And in bright lights and in indoor lighting, it does have this lush sort of vampy red appearance. Um, and I want to note that at angles, there's definitely this gold sort of shift to it. I think you'll see it mostly in uh, extreme angles and in shaded lighting. There's lots of depth with this one. And that blackened base, I think just gives it this very ultra vampy sort of appearance. So very indicative to its name. Now for opacity on it, I'm gonna suggest three coats. Now keep in mind, again, I do have that repair on the snail right now at the point that I was swatching this and I think it might be playing a factor with the opacity, but looking back on it, I still think that three coats is gonna be really perfect on this one just to just get that vampy look to really pop like crazy. And uh, it dries down quite well, so don't be afraid to go in normal on those brush strokes. Very jelly-like formula that uh, evens out very, very well. Now again, I'm gonna suggest a good glossy top coat, which again, you're seeing glisten and glows on the full hand shot here, and I really like those really tiny little holographic sparkles that are dense across the nail. And next is Lemming Lacquer. This is glowing from within, described as a blackberry jelly base with red shimmer and iridescent flakes, shifting purple to red to orange to gold to green. Lots of shift. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 200 US and 20 UK. So this has a true jelly-like formula. It's quite dense on the nail when you apply. And for opacity, I'm gonna suggest two coats on it. You'll see here in just a moment, it builds up very quickly to opacity. Now the flakes here are of the small and medium variety. I didn't see a whole lot of the larger sort of chunky ones as I was applying when I swatched this one. So it's still quite dense with the flaky factor. And you can see on the second coat here, it's just popping like crazy but I think it gives off this very strong berry-like lean. I am stressing that, and I, and I will have that reason at the end of the video in a moment because uh, I have been asked for comparisons between this one and another one. Now this does dry down quite flat, so again, use a glossy top coat to give it that nice, juicy sort of jelly factor. 
And next we have MLF Lacquer. This is Eau Peridot, described as a lime green linear holographic polish with a yellow to green color shifting shimmer and orange reflective micro flakes. This is inspired by the August birthstone, aka yours truly's birthstone, Peridot. Price is 11 and there's a cap of 190 US and 10 UK. So the formula on this is uh, what I would consider jelly-like, but it's very satisfying and applies very opaque. So uh, definitely two coats I think is going to be perfect for most. You'll see here on the second coat, it plumps out very nicely. This is a very flattering sort of um, vibrant green. I honestly don't really care for my own birthstone. And I know that's bad to say, but uh, just the general shades of green that I see with it, it's uh, not very flattering if you ask me, but I love this type of green. So uh, definite hats off to MLF. She definitely made Paradell look very pretty. And that lovely yellow to green sort of shifting shimmer in the backdrop just kind of adds to it. And Night Owl Lacquer brings us Rainbow Fluorite. This is a dark purple filled with green, blue, purple fuchsia flakes inspired by Rainbow Fluorite. Price is $12.80 and there is no cap. So this has a very jelly formula and depending on how you wear it, between two and three coats, depends on how intense that base color is going to come off. So if you stop at two coats, you'll get more of this uh, medium purple sort of appearance with it. But if you take it up to three coats, which is what I did here in a moment, uh, it takes on this almost vampy sort of deep purple and the flakes in here are very, very intense. They are super, super um, iridescent and they lay down nice and flat. So no need for fishing or anything. You'll get quite a bit of payoff on your coats. And here on the third coat, you can kind of see it's really going to depend on your preference. I think two really popped well, but again, I'm extra and I wanted to see what that third coat was going to look like. Now, as you can see between my coats, it does dry down quite flat. So to really get that sparkly sort of iridescent effect from the flakes, go in with a glossy top coat to seal it off. And it's going to just shimmer like crazy with those flakes. And Polish brings us Keshi. This is a soft lavender violet cream with a strong copper glow. This is inspired by Keshi Pearls. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So I was very excited for this one. I really like these soft sort of lavender shades with a strong shimmer to it. And this is very flattering. Uh, I typically like more extreme shades of purple. I tend to shy away from purple in general, but if we're talking deep, dark, vampy or super light and delicate, I am definitely here for it. And this is a very flattering, soft lavender. The shimmer is quite strong and it takes on this very coppery sort of soft effect. Now for opacity, I'm going to suggest three coats on it. The formula is very creamy. It's very smooth. Trust that it's going to level out on its own and you'll avoid any sort of potential streaking uh, as this one is packed full of shimmer. So on the third coat here, you can really see um, it's just plumping out like crazy and just very intense in both the base color and the shimmer. And I'm also once again repeating it myself that uh, finish off with a glossy top coat just to make this one pop like crazy. And you'll get that nice thick appearance that I'm always raving about um, on full manicures. And Pampered Polishes brings us the Diadem. This is a cerulean blue creamy base with silver on holographic flakies. This is inspired by its namesake. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So the formula on this is quite rich. It does feel somewhat jelly-like to me on the first coat, but it builds up like a cream. So it's very intense. I'm going to suggest two coats on it for full opacity, as you'll see here in just a moment that it popped like crazy on the second coat. And I really like how her brush kind of fans out to give you lots of product during application. Definitely helps to really have that awesome formula just spread very easily across the nail. And you can see here it self levels very well too. This is a very flattering set type of blue. While I am blue biased, I do think this color is beautiful, very, very flattering. I think it's going to be flattering on just about any skin tone and pop very well. And of course, that holographic effect is what I would consider a very, very dense scatter sort of effect. Finish off with a glossy top coat and you're good to go. And Penelope Luch brings us Opal Doublet. This is a blurple jelly base with iridescent multicolored flakes. This is inspired by the Opal Doublet stone. Price is 13 and there is no cap. 
So this is very, very jelly, and depending on how you wear it is going to really play up how that base color appears. So I do think that the video is being pretty indicative to what I'm seeing in person. And for opacity, I'm gonna suggest going up to three coats on it. You'll see here in just a moment that it does even out quite a bit, but I just think that third coat helped to uh, get all those flakes to pop very well. This is chock full of them. They are in different sizes, so they're very obvious as you apply and they lay down nice and flat. No need for fishing with this one. Very easy application and it does dry down flat. So again, use a glossy top coat with it and you'll get that nice juicy sort of factor you'll see here in just a moment. And here on that third coat, you can see what I'm talking about. It just really intensifies that base color. It's quite vibrant in person and this really strong mosaic sort of effect with all of those uh, multicolored flakes. It kind of reminds me of a like confetti against a blurple sort of background. So I do think that this is uh, a true sort of blurple depending on your lighting. It might have just the slightest bit more of a purple or blue cast, but I do agree that uh, what I'm seeing here in person is definitely this blurple sort of effect. And next is Poetry Cowgirl. This is all that glitters is goldstone. Described as a rich copper shimmer base packed with copper and silver micro glitters inspired by goldstone. Price is 11 and there is no cap. This is very lovely. I typically shy away big time from copper and brown sort of shades, but this one is one I can definitely get behind. So lots and lots of a sparkly effect. It has this almost metallic sort of sparkle effect. So not quite this intense sort of glitter per se. Um, I think that'll make more sense in a moment when you see my full hand shot. It has a very lovely, almost crelly sort of appearance uh, on how you apply it self levels like a cream, but it builds up like a very dense jelly too, if that makes sense. So it really pops in that second. I can't see many needing a third coat on it. And you can see here with that glossy top coat on my full hand shot, uh, it's got that nice, very intense sort of sparkle effect happening and just a really somewhat neutral, but surprisingly flattering base color. And Pretty Beautiful Unlimited brings us Fire Within. This is a red jelly base with scattered holographic pigment, unicorn pigment, and crystal chameleon flakes that shift orange, pink, and gold. This is inspired by the Mexican Cherry Fire Opal. Price is 12, and there is a cap of 150 US and 10 UK. So the formula on this applies like a very dense jelly. I do want to classify it as a one coater, though I would suggest going in for two thinner coats just to maximize the amount of flakes and sparkle on your nails. I figured this was gonna be a difficult color to capture on swatches, uh, at least for me, but I feel like the video is being pretty representative to what I'm seeing in person. This has a touch of a metallic feel to it, and I'm guessing that's from the uh, holographic pigment. And the flakes are quite strong in this. They are of the small and medium variety. Now this does dry down quite flat, so I'm gonna suggest a glossy top coat, and it gives you this strong, sparkly, metallic feel. Now she also brings us another wax sampler this month. This is in the theme, A Cut Above. Each sampler comes with uh, a 15 cents and they are very lovely. These are quite earthy, so you'll get scents such as uh, driftwood and sea salt, amber tobacco leaf, Cuban tobacco, Glacier Falls. Uh, these are really lovely. Again, if you are a somewhat fruity, but mostly earthy sort of uh, scent lover, this one's definitely for you. And the charm this month is, a, is an adorable little crystal pendant. Each one that you get in your bag will be in a different color and there is variety there. These bags will be eight and there's a cap of 180 US and 20 UK. And last but not least, we have Rogue Lacquer. This is We Will Rock You, described as a deep red brown to red oxblood with red, gold, green color shifting and micro hollow flakes. This is inspired by the deep cinnabar stone. Price is $12.50 and there is no cap on it. So I had quite a few questions on how Rogue's and Lemming's contributions uh, compare, and I think the video is going to give you a really good idea of uh, what I've been saying in the Facebook groups that Rogue's is a what I consider a true sort of oxblood. It's got this strong red undertone, but very much a brown mix with it. 
little bit on the vampire side. The flakes are absolutely different between the two of them. Rogues has this larger sort of opalescent effect and the lemmings has this berry undertone to it. I think the base colors are quite different and their flakes are different too. So again, going to depend on your preference on which one you prefer, or uh, I do consider both different enough to own both. Now, again, I'm going to suggest going in with a glossy top coat to finish off the rogue. Now, wish listing is currently open in Polish Pickups shop. Um, you can get in there and check out all the goodies. At this point, I think that there's only a probably handful of things that still need to be updated in terms of additional swatches and information. But for the most part, I think the majority is already up. I will link that below for you guys. And I'll also link you guys to the Polish Pickup Facebook group if you want to see additional swatches, additional blogger stuff, all that good stuff. And Polish Pickup will be opening up for shopping January 1st at 11 a.m. Eastern time and will run until January 4th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Again, I'll link all this below for you guys. Don't forget to leave a comment on this video and I will select five uh, random winners to win a $10 gift code. Again, please check the comments. I want everyone that has won to be able to grab your uh, gift code from me and um, let me know in the comment section. I love reading your Polish pickup uh, wish listing. Do we have something similar? I personally have quite a bit. There's several micro glitters that are releasing in the shop too that I did not swatch that I will absolutely be having. And there's quite a few lotions too. So big fan of glitters and I'm super excited for it. Let me know and uh, definitely join in on the giveaway. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.